Nicole is scary. We're obsessed with TLC and all the trashy reality TV. It's, it's a, a recap. recap. It's a recap. It's a recap. So remember last week she went out to meet her friends and Mahmood stayed home because he was upset that she had three holes in her in the back of her dress. Um, so she goes to her friends and her friends are like, where's your husband? Oh, he didn't want to come because I have um, holes in the back of my dress and he didn't like what I wore and now he wants a divorce. And I thought it was funny that one of her friends, he was like, oh, so why didn't you change? <laughs> yeah, Nicole, why didn't you change? Nicole clearly wasn't happy with that question. So she made it very clear that Mahmoud was the jerk. And so her friends start to side with her and they're like, oh my God, he's in America. He needs to assimilate. Uh, Nicole sure didn't assimilate when she was in Egypt. Her friends are so annoying because they invite themselves over. They're like, Nicole, can we come over and meet him? And Nicole's like, uh, well, he's going to be super uncomfortable and it's going to make him feel very awkward. So yeah, let's all go and bombard him. Absolutely. Please come over. Okay. Show him a little bit of like, show him a little bit of the world. Mahmoud is making a big deal out of nothing. I've been trying for the past couple of days to get him out of his this bad mood. So they all make their way to her apartment and Nicole is probably giggling inside because she's so happy that she's going to make Mahmoud upset. So she's like, yeah, we're, you know, he's just going to have to deal with it. So they walk inside and Mahmoud was sleeping in his bed. Okay, they barge in open the door and they're like surprise honey my friends are here and you're gonna have to meet them and then her friends walk into the bedroom as he's sleeping he's on his bed and the girls come over to his bed where he's laying down and they I don't know were they on top of the bed to hug him and that's a huge no-no in his culture and religion and Nicole should have known that my religion said, like, I don't suppose to touch another woman. She's not, like, from my family. And some girl come to my room. Her friend, like, hugs me, like, feels weird for me. Mahmoud is trying really, really hard to put a smile on his face. His friends are like, so, do you have alcohol, Nicole? Give me some tequila. I want some vodka. Let's get up tonight. Mahmoud had no idea that Nicole even had alcohol in her apartment. Because remember, the Quran forbids drinking alcohol. But Nicole's like, well, it's in my culture to be a good host, so I must keep alcohol for my guests and serve it to them. Her friends are like, cheers, Mahmoud. And they all sip on their alcohol. They're like, welcome to the USA. This is your welcome party. Woo! They're laughing. They're drinking. And Mahmoud is just like, off to the side <laughs> yeah thank you so much <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> nicole notices that he's very uncomfortable so she's like mahmoud aren't my friends very sweet you know you could have just came with me to meet them but you didn't so they decided to come to you aren't they amazing oh my god she's such a fucking bitch then her guy friend goes yeah so why didn't you come oh I was very tired. <laughs> and Nicole goes, You're a fucking liar, Mahmoud. Tell the truth, Mahmoud. And you're a liar. Mahmoud, tell Whoa. the truth. Yeah, tell the truth. Or I can't hide my feelings anymore. Yeah, I understand yeah. you, Nicole. I understand. Yeah. And I was like, Holy shit. She's seething. She's spiraling. She is unraveling. And she's mother effing scary. <laughs> Oh my god, she's so pissed. She's so pissed. She's so upset at Mahmoud for telling her friends that he was tired and that was the reason why he didn't come out. But he's the crazy guy who wants to get a divorce over a dress. And now he's sitting here smiling and being all nice with my friends, saying, oh, I was tired, that's why I couldn't come. And it's embarrassing. She's all like, ugh, Mahmoud lying is unacceptable. That makes me look like the liar. My friends are gonna think I lied. And I'm thinking, no, they're not, you psycho bitch. If they're not absolute idiots, they're going to know that he was being polite. So anyway, she keeps poking at him. Poke, 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 poke. In front of her friends, she wants to embarrass him. She wants to put him 
on the spot. Come on, Mahmoud, tell them what really happened. You said you wanted a divorce. You said that you hate me because of my dress. You said that you hate my ugly ass haircut that looks like a scarecrow. Right? Right? Where are you going, Mahmoud? Where are you going? Where are you going? Why are you walking away? You hateful little f I'm yeah. sorry. Excuse me. That took a turn. Little oh, hateful little f Hey, hey. What the hell? I knew she was going to show her crazy this season. Like I knew she was on a mission to make him suffer as much as possible. Remember I called it out in the very first episode? But wow, I did not expect this level of nasty. Now here's the difference between Nicole and Mahmoud. When she was in Egypt with Mahmoud, I know she was miserable. She was so sad. She was so upset. But he implemented his culture and his upbringing and his beliefs. She is purposely making him uncomfortable and miserable and she's being mean to him to get back at him. Anyway, my jaw dropped to the floor watching Nicole this whole entire episode. I was like, she is evil. Well, let's move on to Ashley and Manuel. So they're in New York City to meet Manuel's family and he is so hungry and therefore he is quanky. There's nothing I could relate to more than Manuel being angry. Well, before they go anywhere, she needs to read her cards at the hotel room. And he's like, Ay, Dios míos, tengo mucho, mucho hambre. Quiero comer ahora. Y también uh, y sentidos un poquito irracional. Y... Eh, dice verdad las cartas. Porque a vos no te importa. Tengo hambre, pero no te importa. Eso sí, irracional. I feel this pain. I'm a complete beast when I'm hungry. So like, don't even come near me. Don't try to talk to me. Do not even look in my direction until I get food in my belly. Now, when they finally go out to get food, Manuel is so excited. He's doing his happy dance. They're also in a part of the city where there's a huge Equatoriano population and Manuel is loving it. He's like, okay, I'm going to stay here and you can go back to Rochester alone. <laughs> Listen, I know he's kind of like a dick in a lot of his comments, but I totally see it in a joking manner because a lot of the times Ashley's laughing. I feel like this is their banter, you know? So they meet up with Jonathan for dinner and Ashley tells him about how Manuel is always on his phone. He's on his phone all the time. And he says in his interview that Ashley always checks his phone and like he just lets her. So clearly he's not hiding anything from his phone. He just thinks it's annoying. He's like, why does she always want to be on my phone and check my phone? Like this is too much. She's so dramatic. I don't know. I just don't take anything between them. Like their fights very seriously. I think they are a very happy happy couple and I think their fights are like kind of normal like the normal amount of fighting that each couple has naturally I think um I just really like them I don't know I I, I just feel like in real life I would be friends with them moving on to Rob and Sophie Rob's still pissy about finding out that Sophie and Callum had dated for about 30 days when they were 15 years old is it 15 16 or 17 I feel like the age keeps changing okay I I'm pretty sure in the last episode they said 16 but then in the very beginning she said 17 girl I don't know but anyway she's like Rob I don't even consider him my ex we were 15 but you should have told me do my feelings not matter we're in friends how long 10 11 12 it's I don't know irrelevant. more than a decade it's not irrelevant. I'm not allowed to have any feelings I'm you just are. supposed to accept you everything you are allowed to have feelings completely clearly not Callum looks over and sees Rob and Sophie having a really heated argument and Rob looks like he's about to pop a vein so he walks over to make sure if everything's okay and Sophie's like oh my god he thinks we're exes tell him we're no exes and Callum goes well you know we were young and then Rob goes well it's the lack of honest communication that bothers me so I'm gonna keep talking to my wife you can go and Callum goes okay I just wanted to make sure everything was okay and then he walks away I think Callum was a little kind of scared Rob's still pissy. Sophie is so apologetic. She's like, I'm sorry, Rob. And she's hugging him and kissing him. She's like, I'm sorry, Rob. And she does this little sad little puppy dog eyes and lips. I'm so sorry, Rob. I said I'm sorry. I feel bad. I didn't prepare him for the situation and maybe I did mess up. But right now, I don't know what else I can even do besides keep apologizing to him. Ugh. And Rob's like, you know what? I don't care. I'm leaving. And then he leaves. Then Callum says in his interview that if Sophie wanted to date again, he wouldn't say no. I mean, if she said she wanted to date again, 
I mean, I definitely wouldn't say no. <laughs> oh, you know what? Why did he say this to the cameraman? Say it to Rob. I wanted to see some drama. Okay, I wanted to see Rob cry. Callum should not have said this to the producer or the cameraman. He should have directly told Rob. Hey, if Sophie were actually single and wanted to date again, I would date her. Oh, that would have been so good. That would have been so good. Rob would have been so pissed. The next morning, Sophie tells Callum that they need to have some distance in their friendship because Rob is still being a little bitch baby. And Callum goes, but Sophie, we're best friends. You can't just cut me out of your life. And she's like, sorry, babes, I'm married to a man baby and uh, I need to respect his wishes. I'm hoping my sacrifice with losing Callum shows that I do prioritize him and then we're able to actually get past this. Then Rob and Sophie meet up again at night, miserable as ever, talking about the same old thing again. And Sophie tells him, well, Rob, I hope you're happy. I cut off things with Callum to show you how much I care about you, Rob. And he's like, wow, well, this is the first time you're showing some kind of effort. So when are you going to come home? And she's like, tomorrow. And he's like, really? Are you going to come home tomorrow? And she's like, yes, I'm going to come home tomorrow, Rob. And he's like, okay, we'll see. And then they say goodnight and they leave. We're going to end this recap with Emily and Kaba. Emily's about to hang out with Kobe and his friends. And she's very nervous because she knows they were talking crap about her. And they're not her biggest fans. Kobe thinks he's going to prove all of his friends wrong. And he's going to make everybody fall in love with Emily. I really do hope Kobe's friends and I can work it out. Because I really do want them to like me. And they mean a lot to Kobe. And Kobe means a lot to me. Kobe and his friends play a game of ball. I don't really know what kind of game of ball this was. I wasn't paying that close of attention. It was kind of like soccer, but with her hands. And Kobe has a bad knee. All of a sudden during the game, he starts limping and Emily's like, oh my God, is my husband okay? So she goes up to check on him. And then I was like, oh, I see what's happening here. I think the producers totally set her up to look like the nagging, annoying wife. They were probably like, oh, Emily, go check up on Kobe. He wants you to check and just make sure you tell him A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Okay, so we don't get sued. Okay. And then so she walks over to Kobe and she's like, Kobe, are you okay? Do you think you tore it up again? Make sure you do this and make sure you do that. Make sure your knees up and put your leg up and make sure you ice it. And you want to make sure you don't let this happen again and blah, 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 blah. And Kobe gets really frustrated. He's like, okay, babe, I, I got it. I got it. Like, okay, babe, don't worry. You can go back. Okay. I, I blah, blah. And she's like, Kobe, I'm just trying to help you. I think he got frustrated because he really desperately wanted his friends to accept Emily and to like her. And by Emily doing this and like hovering and saying all this stuff about how to take care of his leg, they're going to perceive it in a certain way. Like she's bossing him around, that she's controlling. And that is a no for this group of dudes. So that's why he kept saying, I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, please leave. Let me handle it. But she stayed and she persisted and she yapped away. And Valerie was like, Kobe, are you okay? She was telling you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I mean, who is she? That's not her place to do that. And he's like, yeah, well, that's how she is. And his friends are so confused. Their mind is boggled. They don't understand how a man could deal with that. They're like, how do you deal with that? I just hope sometimes she can understand that she's in Africa right now. And if she was to act like a Cameroonian wife, then my friends would look at Emily in a positive way. Now, if I were Emily in this situation, I would have just played the part. I mean, they're only there for a couple days, maybe a week or two. I would have just done what he asked me to do. I would have backed away because he so desperately wants to be accepted and respected by his friends and his family. And if I have to play that part, just for that time, then I'll play the part. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Now in Kobe's interview, he mentions how he specifically asked Emily to stay back to keep it cool just during the trip. And the fact that she didn't is upsetting him. And I get it. I get it. After the game, Kobe is somewhere else and Emily approaches his friends. And she's like, so a little birdie told me that you guys are concerned about me and Kobe. And they're like, uh, yeah, you know, um, white women we heard are very bossy and we, d we, we don't let women boss us around. And she's like, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm all of that, but I'm also driven and I'm a great wife and a great mother. And they're like, okay, well, we just want what's best for Kobe. 
Like you spoke to him very authoritatively to Kobe about his knee in public. That's a huge no. You basically embarrassed him. And she's like, oh my God, I treat him like a king, but I'm also his queen. I can't believe how they see me caring for my husband as embarrassing. They're judging me when I'm trying to look out for Kobe, their best friend. Knowing that they have bad feelings about me and think our relationship isn't going to last, it just makes me feel like they aren't even giving me a shot. And they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, well, we just have a really big problem with the fact that he lives under your father's roof, which means he has no choice but to be submissive to you. Then the guys tell her that when Kobe first came back from China after meeting Emily, his girlfriend in Cameroon still thought they were dating. So Emily's like, what? I never knew that. And I don't really care for this storyline. Please don't make it a thing. Please don't make it a thing. Who cares about the ex-girlfriend? Kobe and Emily have been married for three years. They have three beautiful children. I do not care for the storyline. I just don't want a nothing burger to become a something burger. Okay, leave it a nothing burger. Well, that's it for the recap. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. And I will talk to you guys in my next video for the single life, the final Final, final, final part of the tell all. Bye. It's a recap. It's a recap.